Hey guys, I'm Joe, and today we're celebrating spring with asparagus. Now, asparagus is one of those things that you could easily get year-round in places like the United States. But here in Hungary, it's actually hard to get out of season. So now that spring has sprung, of course, asparagus is available in the markets. And since I don't get the chance to eat them all year round, this is when I usually buy them like crazy. But one of my favorite ways to serve asparagus is in a quiche. This is the recipe I want to show you today. An asparagus, bacon, and three cheese quiche. It's made with Gruyere, Fontina, and mozzarella. It's really tasty, it's salty, it's creamy, and it really celebrates the asparagus. I just think that the pairing of bacon, cheese, and asparagus is one that's pretty memorable. You can serve this at brunch or even a light dinner with a salad on the side. So let me show you how it's done. Okay, so for our quiche pastry dough, I have one and a quarter cup of flour. I also have a teaspoon of salt, and I'll be using uh, one stick of butter or the equivalent of this block, which is half, 113 grams of butter. I'm going to cube that up and then blend it into the butter with my pastry blender. And then I'll add a little ice water, bring it all together, and that'll be our dough. Now I'm blending it all together. And you can do this in a food processor too. You just wanna make sure that you do it in little pulses so that you don't overwork the dough. But I prefer to do it with a pastry blender because I can see exactly uh, what stage I'm at. So this is exactly what you want, like this kind of oatmeal-y texture. And so now I'm just gonna add some water. I don't have ice in the freezer, so I'm just gonna get the water as cold as I can get it. And we'll see how far this tablespoon of water goes. I may need to add another tablespoon. And yes, I do. And even a little bit more. It's better to add it a little bit at a time because then you will be sure that you won't oversaturate the dough. You want it to start clumping, so as you can see now with the addition of the water the third time, it's starting to clump a little better. And uh, since our quiche pan is rectangular, I'm going to use this rectangular plate to form the dough. Okay, let's see if I can get it in one swipe. You want to use the plastic wrap to form it. And so this can go in the fridge for about an hour to chill. So the pie dough has been chilling for about an hour and I am ready to roll it out. I'm going to roll this between two pieces of plastic wrap. So this way I don't have to use any flour. And I'm going to use my trusty jar to roll it out. And since the dough is super cold from coming out of the fridge, the first few minutes are going to be a little difficult because it's going to want to crack, but it'll warm up as you go. So this is generally the shape that we want. As you can see, it is almost the shape of the pan. I will be pressing the dough in to the tart shell, so it's okay that it's a little bit irregular. And what I'll do is I will remove the top layer of plastic wrap, and then I'll use the bottom layer to help place it into the mold. Just like that. could trim the excess, but I actually like the crust a lot when it comes to a quiche. So I'll just fold it in, and if it's a little bit thick in some places, you can remove it and move it to an area where it's a little thin. 
just like that. So another thing you can do is trim the excess like this and then you get a really clean edge. Okay. And I'm going to put this in the fridge to chill for about 20 to 30 minutes just to make sure that it's nice and cold because it's gotten really warm out here during the rolling. So. So I've got our pie dough chilled for about 20 minutes. I'm going to blind bake this crust, so this ensures that it doesn't get soggy from the quiche filling. Uh, but before I put it in the oven, I want to dock the bottom with a fork, just to prevent it from bubbling up. I'm going to put some foil in the bottom. I'll put the nonstick side in like this. And you can also cover the edge a little bit so that it doesn't burn. And I'm going to add some beans because this will keep the pie dough from rising. If you have pie weights, you can also use that as well. But beans are your inexpensive option. Press them into the corners. And I'm going to put this onto the rack and into the oven it goes. I have the oven preheating at 375 degrees and this should blind bake for about 10 minutes. So I've got a bunch of beautiful green asparagus. The thing with asparagus is that the stem end is really tough. This is the part that's actually in the ground and it grows out of a rhizome so it's kind of like a, like a, a lily or a tulip would grow. But this part's very, very woody. So we're going to trim that off. And you kind of want to find the spot where it's bendy and then cut there. Now I'm not going to do that for every single one because then they're going to end up being different lengths. I want them to be generally in the same length for the uh, quiche pan since it's rectangular. So I'm just going to take like the asparagus that looks to be the, the longest and the woodiest and use that as kind of like the measurement for the rest. So I'm just going to line them up by their heads. Okay. These three are quite short, so I'll do those separately. And uh, I would say like maybe about here, like that. Okay. And then these short guys, well, the thing is that they're kind of tough, so I'll have to make them shorter than the rest. But that's okay. So these will be the well, babies of the bunch. So these are going to go in the roasting pan. And as soon as the quiche shell is finished baking, I'm going to put those in. So I have this really nice unfiltered olive oil. I'm just going to give the asparagus a light drizzle. Okay, and a little bit of salt. and pepper. And just toss it lightly and making sure to have them all in one single layer. And this can go in the oven as soon as the quiche shell has finished baking. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes and I'm gonna take out our quiche shell. So I bake this for 10 minutes with the beans and I'm just going to remove the beans and put it back in the oven for another 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so the pie shell has been in for an additional 12 minutes. And I'm gonna take it out and let it cool a little bit before I add the fillings. I'm putting in the asparagus and this will go for 10 minutes as well. Okay, the asparagus has been in the oven for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna take them out. So as you can see, they're nice and tender and the, the end has just a little ply. I don't wanna bake it any longer or roast it any longer because then it'll get too soft and mushy. 
this will continue cooking in the pie shell. So this is kind of like a blanching, you could say. So I've got slab bacon here. Um, I'm going for eight ounces. So this is about 10 ounces, but once I trim it and remove the skin from the bottom, it'll be just the amount I need. And I'm gonna cut these into little lardon, as they call it in French. So this is going into the pan, which I just started preheating. With bacon, it's actually better to add it to a cold pan. And I'm getting them into a single layer. And we're gonna let all the fat, or as much of the fat, render out so that'll be nice and crispy and meaty. The bacon has rendered out nicely. I'm gonna turn off the heat and set this aside to cool slightly. Okay, so for the quiche, I have the three cheeses, the Gruyere, Fontina, and mozzarella that will line the inside of the quiche. And of course, there'll be the bacon and the asparagus, but then you have the custard that will hold everything together. Uh, the custard includes heavy cream, creme fraiche, and three eggs. So I'm going to beat these all together. Oh, it's double yolk. Now I'm adding the creme fraiche. And I just need a half cup of cream, that's two thirds of this bottle. And before I forget, I like to add a tiny bit of nutmeg to the quiche batter. It gives it a little extra flavor. So I use the microplane to grate some nutmeg into it. Okay, and then you've got to be a little careful with this because the creme fraiche is very thick. I'm going to add some pepper. I won't be adding salt because the cheeses are salty, the bacon's salty, so you really don't need the salt. We have our quiche tart, we have our bacon, we have the asparagus. What I want to do now is see how long the asparagus is and then trim off the ends. So I would say, I'll mark it with my fingernail like that. And the ends will go in the tart shell. So let me just remove the asparagus to my cutting board. Actually, our little short guys are the perfect length. So here's the mark that I made. So we can just start trimming them. And I'll set these aside. And for these guys, I'm just gonna cut them into like little pieces. So I'm gonna put these on the bottom, scatter it around. And I'm gonna add the cheeses. And I'm adding the bacon with a slatted spoon so that I can minimize the bacon fat that I add. And I'm going to do another layer of the cheese. And the remaining bacon. And I think I can still put a little bit more cheese. adding the asparagus ends. Had to do a little extra trimming, but that's okay. I'm just gonna use my fingers to lay these in nicely. And the custard.
Turn this a little bit into the oven. Still at 375 degrees, and it'll bake for about 25 to 30 minutes until the custard is set. Okay, the quiche has been in for about 27, 28 minutes, and I'm gonna take it out. Now I'm going to move it over to the cooling rack. And you'll want to let this cool pretty much to room temperature before cutting in. The custard is nice and set. It's going to shrink just a little bit once it's cool, but it'll be all good. Okay, so since this is a removable tart pan, or I should say a removable bottom tart pan, I'm going to remove the frame using this loaf pan. So I'm just gonna slide this over. And just like that. You can see how flaky the crust is all around. Like right here. It's still very hot on the bottom. So now I'm going to attempt to slide it off of the bottom. And I'm making sure that it's not stuck anywhere. So just sliding it around like this. Okay. And then hopefully I can wiggle it off. Okay. There you go. So I am very eager to slice into this because it looks really delicious. And I know that's a very overused word, but it truly does look delicious. Um, so the way I like to serve this is I, I don't want to cut across the asparagus. I like to do like, like slices like that. And with quiche, I really love the crust. So I think I'm going to take these three asparagus for myself on the end. So I'm just going to cut very carefully because I don't want to bruise the crust. I'll just slide through it a second time. I think I've loosened it. Let's see how that looks inside. Oops, I got a little bit of extra crust here. I can nibble on that one. <laughs> I'm gonna add this to my plate. And I'm gonna add a little bit of salad mix to the side. and just a little drizzle of olive oil. And here's our finished quiche. So before I talk any more about this quiche, I think I'm gonna slice right into it. Okay. I've got a nice little bite here with bacon and asparagus. Mm. It's really sweet, salty, cheesy. And I'll have a little lettuce too. Well, after we're done taping, I will be finishing this slice and probably another one. So I think this is the recipe that you'll really like. It has such great flavor, really a depth of flavor, especially from the bacon and the three different cheeses. The, the Gruyere is definitely the one that hits the high note, but the others play really good supporting roles. And the asparagus, since it's fresh and in season currently, it's so nice and sweet. There's no bitterness at all. And it just all comes together with this wonderful, buttery, flaky pastry crust. So please try this asparagus quiche and let me know what you think about it in the comments. And also like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.